Hi guys, I'm Kalila Reynolds and we're back with another episode of Money Moves brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service. For the past couple of weeks, we've been talking to you about the export process, but let's say you're a manufacturer, right? You also have a need to import certain things because you have inputs into your product that you might not be able to source locally here in Jamaica. So Stephen Dawkins from the JMEA is back with us and he's going to be walking us through that process. And welcome back, Stephen. Thanks for having me again, Camilo. And Stephen has a wealth of knowledge and he's been giving us so far tips on exporting. But there's also another side to it, Stephen. Like manufacturers also need to import certain parts of the process, certain parts of the, the materials that they need to make these goods that they eventually are going to export. So, so how does that process work? Is it a lot different from the export process? Importing is far different from exporting. exporting. The process is, is very far more simpler than it is for exporting. And, and just to make it as straightforward as possible, you probably need three documents pieces of paper to import an item. Whereas to export, you need uh, probably about eight or 10 pieces wow. of documents in order to export. But before I go there about talking about importing, it is very important to recognize that the manufacturers here in Jamaica tend to look at our local market for all their inputs before they even think about going overseas for of course. Their, their, yes. their, their, their raw things materials that are available here. because things are available here. So we do everything to support our local industry. But having said that, there are items that manufacturers do need to have in their input. In the raw materials from, from f different flavors, from different um, equipment that is required and you know, so on. So import, imports of raw material vary considerable. If, it's in, if you're in beverage manufacturing, food manufacturing, whatever it is, it requires some level of import because Jamaica does not have all the necessary raw materials necessary for to get a specific product to market. So what are those three uh, forms that you need to import something? Well, generally, you, you, the person you're buying from it, you need a you need an invoice. Then you need the import license, and the import license varies depending on what you are actually bringing into the country to manufacture. And you need your bill of lading, generally speaking. What's that? That's that's shipping document that the shipper gives you that outlines what is on in the in the containers and the price of the, the, the shipping cost mm -hmm. of that. So that's your bill of laden. And then you need to, when from once your, 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 your goods are on ports here, you need to pay customs. And those fees vary considerable depending on what you're importing and what the duty elements are. But you can apply for exemptions and waivers. Yes, depending we do. Depending on what it is. Depending on what it is, we do um, apply for those. The, and that's what the JMEA does. We try as much as possible to lobby for our manufacturers to ensure that they get certain preferential treatment in order to build this economy. So three forms to import an item and eight to ten forms to export an item. Yes. Do you think that's excessive? Well, there's a number of reasons so, um, surrounding the number of forms that you have to complete because Jamaica has a history, unfortunately, a history of contrabands and stuff. So mm -hmm. every shipment that leaves Jamaica has to be protected. So each container needs an integrity form that is signed by a special person at your company. Sometimes it needs a police report and all of these various documents in order but to get it. But we talk about the ease, improving the ease of doing business in Jamaica. Is that one of the areas that should be looked at? And I must say they are looking at it and it has been improving because what they try to do is more, even though it's a number of documents and a number of paperwork, what they try to do as much as possible is to improve the process. So they have, they have created you no know, specific windows that you have everything on it. Like for example, they don't ask what the acronym is, but it's, what it means is ASICUDA system. Mm -hmm. 
you can research that. That's, That's the custom system. Custom yeah. system that they have introduced. So you have that. So you are able to process your documents a lot faster because whereas you used to have to physically go on the port to process your document, you no longer have to do that. All that can be done online. And what they are trying to do now is to get everything online, all the processes through a trade um, information portal, all the ports processes, all the documentation, all the fees, everything. So you can just sit at your desk and just, you know, input all that information to get your goods out. On, on average, how long does it take to get your goods into the country and out of the country? Well, um, transit time depends on where you're coming from, right, into Jamaica. The thing is that from once the container lands at port, it can be a same day a same day element because the core the the port or the customs also facilitate a same day service in that all the containers are not necessarily stripped on port it's sometimes randomly checked and you know go to your warehouses and stuff but from once all your paperwork are fine is same day if it's not fine it takes it can take as long as you process your right. your paperwork and on the export side Transit time is also critical. Again, from once you have all your paperwork intact, it's just a matter of getting it out, getting it um, from the port to your warehouses. So it can be a same day process as well as it can be weeks. Be, we, yeah, weeks, right? But transit time is usually the critical time in which from port to port, it takes, for example, from Jamaica to Cayman, it takes three days, two to three days the transit time. From Dominica all the, to Dominica, although it's in the Caribbean, it takes up to three weeks because it's only certain shipping lines that go to Dominica. I see. And that is it. So, so it's a lot of transshipment that happens. It go to Miami, then come down into the Caribbean and go make a number of stops before it actually reach a particular destination. Mm. So it varies considerably. So that's a case for the logistics hub that yes. we had been hearing about. Absolutely. Whatever happened to that. Thanks again, Stephen, for joining us. Thank Stephen you so Dawkins much. is with the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association. That's it for this edition of Money Moves, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service. Check out their website, EximBankJA.com. I'm Kalila Reynolds. See you next week.